Hi there, and welcome to The Empowering Word. I'm Pastor Ken Brown, and I'm so excited that you joined me today. Uh, and, you know, we're just going to start this kind of a new series. Um, and I'm going to be peppering these in throughout the next uh, few weeks and whatnot. But uh, I want to talk in terms of encounters with Jesus, encounters with Christ. And, uh, and I want to walk through some, some pretty well-known uh, Bible stories or uh, encounters within the New Testament through the Gospels uh, where Jesus uh, encounters a person or uh, has something to say about uh, uh, somebody and, and how then we can uh, use these to uh, in some way impact our lives and change maybe the way we see Jesus, maybe even change the way that we see ourselves and quite frankly, uh, apply these in such a way that, um, that will be uh, just impactful and, and, uh, and powerful. So today I want to start this kind of series uh, talking about the call of Peter. And, uh, and so we're just going to read here in uh, the book of Luke, uh, and we're going to begin here in chapter 5. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. I, I, I want you to picture what's happening here. This is uh, very early on in the ministry of Jesus. As a matter of fact, this is his first call to a disciple, to, to make a disciple. And, uh, and he's teaching the people and great crowds are gathering around him and he's declaring the word of God. And, you know, as, as we've seen, it's this idea too, where, you know, when Jesus spoke, he spoke with such authority. He spoke with such um, power and, uh, you know, the, the, it just drew people to him. I, Jesus is, is so magnetic. Uh, and, and, and to be honest with you, you know, a magnet has both poles. Uh, he's polarizing in many ways. He draws those that absolutely are in need of him. And he repels those that are jealous of him and have a religious kind of uh, spirit about them. And so... Jesus is teaching and all these crowds are coming in and they're literally kind of overcoming him and he's coming up to a water's edge and he basically sees a couple of, bolt, a couple of boats and he jumps onto the boat. Now, I kind of want you to put yourself in the place of Simon. Now, Simon is, uh, is later known as Peter. It's, Jesus changes his name, calls him Peter the Rock. Um, but for much of the earlier parts of, of the... Uh, uh, the, the gospel narratives, uh, Peter is known as Simon or Simon Peter. And so here it is Simon, before he uh, was called as a disciple of Jesus, he's a fisherman. And, and quite frankly, he's probably a, a very good fisherman because he has more than one boat. And so here uh, Jesus decides to jump in Peter's boat, into Simon's boat. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's a lot like how Jesus works in our lives today. Uh, many times we're just going about our business, doing our thing. And, you know, for whatever reason, uh, Jesus decides to jump in our boat. And, uh, and he calls us out in many ways. And so here, uh, Peter was just fishing. He was doing his daily, daily deed. And Jesus decides to step onto his boat and use it as a platform to minister from. And so he, he says, can you cast out on the water a little bit? So he casts out a little bit off the shore and Jesus sits down and teaches. Now, again, uh, we've talked about this uh, as we were talking about the, the Beatitudes um, and the idea that when, when a teacher, uh, a rabbi would sit to teach because it was, it was basically a positional place of authority and it was a way that, that was traditionally done to teach. So Jesus, when he sits, he begins to teach. 
he finishes teaching and he stands up. And this is how the story continues. And it says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break so that they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. See, friends, I believe that God wants to take over basically your life. I think that's really what Jesus does here. He takes over Simon's life. Now, that's a good thing, to be honest with you, because for all intents and purposes, when Jesus shows up, it had been a long stretch, a point in which uh, Peter and his, and his uh, partners in business had not had a successful catch. They literally were out all night fishing on the sea and they caught nothing, which is why they were over just kind of mending their nets. They weren't cleaning fish. When Jesus found them, they weren't cleaning fish. They were mending nets. They were fixing their nets, thinking, well, I guess we better prepare for tomorrow's catch and hopefully we catch something. Now, when Jesus shows up, he's he, he comes to Peter in such a way that Peter's not really expecting it. It doesn't really, it doesn't really benefit Peter for, for Jesus to step on his boat, but it really, to be honest with you, he has nothing else going for him. So Jesus steps onto his boat and makes it a platform for ministry. Friends, I want to tell you that Jesus wants to step on your boat. He wants to step into the place of your life, and he wants to make your life a platform for his ministry. He wants his words to be spoken from your platform. Friends, I don't know where you work. I don't know uh, what you do for a living, but I do know that God wants to use your talents, your abilities to influence change in the marketplace where you are. And so Jesus wants to take you and while you may have been, as we talked the other week about fruitful seasons, you may feel like you've been in an unfruitful season, like you haven't been effectively doing what it is that you have been called to do. Peter was a fisherman. That was his identity. But maybe your identity is a little skewed. Maybe you've been so busy focusing on catching fish that you're kind of missing the bigger picture here. Jesus is in your boat. So friends, Jesus begins to take Peter's lifestyle, he takes his, his business, and he begins to make it a platform for ministry. After he's done, kind of rearranging a few things, he tells Peter, let's go out deeper. Let's go into some deep water. Friends, I'm going to tell you that when Jesus begins to move in your life, he's going to take you into a deeper place. He wants to take you further than you've gone before, and he wants to stretch you into a new horizon. And so Peter is basically sitting there going, ah, listen, we have worked hard all night. But because you're the master, because you said it, even though we haven't caught anything, we'll do so. I'll go out and I'll let down our nets. They did that, and they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Listen, they had a record number, crazy, like, they've never had a catch like this, so much so that it broke their boats. They began to sink. Friends, this is that dynamic that Jesus wants to call us into. He wants to... Take us to a place where all of a sudden the blessings overtake us. He wants to bring us to a place where the ministry of, of his presence in our lives 
But what is he really trying to bring us to? He's trying to bring us to a greater sense of faith in him that where he really wants to take us is beyond what we can see in the natural. Peter recognized instantly and he says, man, I am a sinner. I don't deserve any of the blessings that you're, that's, that's coming on me and my crew and, and my partners here. And Jesus basically sees through all of those things and he says, I've called you. And today you're going to become more than just a fisher of fish. You're going to become a fisher of men. And when they got back to shore, they left everything and they followed Jesus. Now, friends, this is exactly what Jesus wants us and where he wants us to be is in this place of surrender and following after him. Friends, he wants to take what you are, who you are. He's not, listen, he doesn't tell them, well, you're going to uh, instantly change. He basically says, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. I'm going to take your time, your talents, your resources, all the things that you are, and I'm going to use it in such a way that it impacts my kingdom and it benefits my kingdom and it stores treasure in heaven instead of here on earth where moth and rust destroy. Listen, I'm telling you, friends, whatever it is that you have talent in or whatever it is that God, that you're, you're naturally, uh, 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 listen, I've, I've seen this over and over again. Uh, people that are construction builders, people that build, God begins to use them. What their natural talents are, a lot of times speak to what their spiritual talents are or what the Holy Spirit wants to begin to do in them. A lot of people that are builders, I've seen them, and they are, they are builders in the church. They help build the kingdom of God. And so there's this kind of dynamic. It's, it's like sales. Uh, and God basically says, I want to take those talents that you have to speak with people and to share with people about a product. And I want to take that and I want to use your mouth to speak to people about my word, about my will and about the person of Jesus. Friend, it, you, you can have the least little bit of talent. It, 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 uh, listen, you can be an unsuccessful fisherman and when you're anointed by Jesus, and now all of a sudden Jesus is in your boat, and look at that, you can fish better. It's the same thing that happens in our ministries. It's the same thing that happens in our lives. When we allow Jesus to be at the center of our lives, when we allow Jesus in the boat with us, rather than on the shore and we ignore him, but rather we allow him into our space, in the boat with us, that then things begin to manifest. He begins to manifest in our lives. Miracles, signs, and wonders follow those that believe. Friends, today, I want to encourage you, and I hope this is an encouraging word to someone today, that you hear that Jesus wants to be not only uh, uh, just, just a, a far-off Savior, but someone that is intimately involved in your daily activities, that you would think upon Him, and that He would just begin to, to be part of your natural conversation and that the supernatural would just become natural, that radical Christianity would just become normal Christianity. Friends, that the Holy Spirit would just begin to give you words of knowledge for your, your workmates. And you don't have to go in a thus saith the Lord kind of a thing. As God just begins to speak to you about someone, just share with them. Just share with them. You know, friend, I, I, I feel like, like, like you're just going through a rough uh, time here and that, you know, maybe... It has to do with your, your parents, or maybe it's just a, 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 an issue at home. Uh, can I pray with you? Listen, let's allow the Holy Spirit to move through us. Maybe it, it's just a, an area of someone needs a physical healing. Well, let's just pray for him. Listen, I'm not in the cubicle. I'm not in your workplace. I'm not out there in the construction site. You are. God has sent us into the world to be salt and light. Shine your light. Speak the word of God. Speak the word by faith. Be a, a, just a, a, a difference maker on the earth. Friends, that's the dynamic. When we encounter Christ, it leads us into areas of service and ministry. So friends, today I want you to be empowered for service and ministry because you're empowered by the person of Jesus who is the empowering word and so I want to encourage you to live empowered by the word.